This is another uh, 1979 Pioneer CTF 950 cassette deck, and I've got the face of it off because I'm going to talk about some things that uh, that were done to this unit. Um, when I received it, the whole transport mechanism needed to be uh, reworked. Uh, the take-up reel was broken. The I needed to replace both the pinch rollers. You'll note that um, these two pinch rollers are brand new. Also, one of the things that I've gotten accustomed to doing is going ahead and replacing this um, height nut. This this keep, makes the uh, the height of the feed um, pinch roller correct, so that you get a good glide path of the uh, tape across it. Um, of course, I rebuilt the take-up motor. I'm doing that with all of these units. These take-up motors, once I take them apart, uh, I many times find that they are, um, they're really dirty inside. And, you know, when you think about 40 years of rewinding tapes, because this, this actually operates at two speeds. Um, at 12 volts, it's the full speed. At 6 volts, it's take-up. So it's, this thing's a workhorse. Um, taking it apart and cleaning it and uh, basically refurbishing it uh, makes it, you know, it's going to be good for another 40 years. Uh, we have a few other things with this particular deck. Of course, um, I always go through and I do an azimuth adjustment. Um, these are always marked in red paint to keep them from moving. Uh, we'll take a tour of other things on the unit, but uh, one of these buttons was broken. I had to, to uh, replace it. Um, but for the most part, the electronics were in really good shape. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to pick the camera up and kind of show you some things on the inside. Now, what, as I said, the, the take-up motor was... Um, I rebuilt that. Of course, you've got new belts. Um, and the stand, uh, the stands that actually hold the capstan in place, these little things back here were broken off because uh, they got broken either in shipping or somebody manhandled the unit. Um, one capacitor was replaced. It was this, um, this capacitor back here. It's a 10 microfarad capacitor. These usually, they may reform over time, but... Uh, that was measuring uh, about 15 microfarads. It's 10. It's out of terribly out of spec. I did take apart um, these uh, switches. You can pull. You can work to pull them apart, and then you can clean the inside of them. So the static's been removed from these. They're clean. My rule for recapping is recap if you have to. Um, nothing on either of these boards indicated that the capacitors needed to be change the same thing for the rest of this unit. In fact, this unit sounds pretty good. I really, I am always mark the pots. You can see where I've got uh, a dot on the pot and then on the board. Putting it on the scope, I only had to adjust um, one of the pots a little bit. Most of the rest of them, you'll notice they're pretty much in the same place they were when, uh, when, I, when I got it. So this, this unit was in really good shape just kind of right out of the box in terms of the electronics. Um, I did have a slight problem with the um, this volume control. This pot actually was kind of, um, it seemed to be scraping a little bit. Turned out it was not the, uh, the wipers on the pot themselves. It was a wiper at the back. Uh, which is used to put tension on it so that it, it so that it smoothly moves. So I was able to pull that apart and grease that. This works perfectly now. And that's really it. Um, nothing else uh, was done other than, of course, I always I always shine up the the buttons and I always shine up all of the components. And when we put the face on it, you'll you'll see how it looks. And of course, these buttons look really good as well. Uh, after I got them shined up. So what I'm going to do, put the face on, and then we're going to run through some tests, and I'll talk about uh, uh, some of the other things that we did, and you'll get a chance to take a tour of it and see how it works. Okay, this is the 1979 
Pioneer CTF 950. I'm going to talk about a few things with this right now. I have, I'm playing uh, through the source. So you can hear music playing. It's actually coming through the source. Uh, it's not recording. Uh, I don't have a tape in or anything like that. That's how it's working right now. So I'm going to talk through a little bit about the deck itself. Um, first, you have a dust cover that covers up the head and the mechanism. Have it up when you're not listening to a tape. Um, you have your all your logic controls, rewind, fast forward, stop, play, record and pause to record it. You press record and play at the same time. Uh, you have a little bit of a function uh, dial here. You've got uh, a timer start where you set it to start uh, playing when the power comes on or you, to start recording uh, or off. Uh, you have some memory functions. We'll go through some of those. And then you've got uh, your, uh, your view meter peak, um, peak hold. So you'll notice that you'll see some of those uh, segments remain lit because they're, they're uh, holding the highest that they've uh, heard so far in average. You have um, Dolby. This only has Dolby B because this was back in 1979. Um, Dolby C had not been released commercially uh, on decks until I think it was 1980. Um, so, uh, but you also have uh, a line in, or a mic input if you choose to use it. This deck, the 950, was the first uh, deck that Pioneer released that would work with metal tapes. Now, I do have a metal tape that I'll be using to do some testing so you can see how it works, you will find this deck is able to get some of the best sound out of not only a uh, chromium dioxide or a high bias tape, but even the standard tapes. It gets really good sound out of. So we're going to do some tests so you can see how it sounds. And of course, I understand you're listening to this through, you know, a phone that's recording it, but that's will at least give you an indication of how it works. Um, so we're going to get started in just a minute, but I want to explain how recording works. When you go to record, right now, as I said, I'm playing this on source. I'm, I can leave it on source, adjust my input volume, and get it where I want it, and it will record and everything will be fine. But what's nice about a three-head deck is there's a record head and a playback head and you get to listen to it playing back when you have it on tape monitor and we're going to show you that in just a minute. You also have a tape bias fine adjustment. So what this does is it lets you alter a little bit of the bias on the tape and that has to do with how the record head is laying down and cleaning the tape, essentially re removing uh, what was there before. but producing then a, a specific bias current for the recording. And so you can alter that a little bit. You will hear when we turn it to the left that on some tapes it'll brighten a little bit and when you turn it to the right it will dull a little bit. Um, maybe get a little warmer, a little brighter. So I'm going to show you how that works. So let's get started. We're going to take uh, a standard tape. Notice this is on standard. Um, and that really, even though you use it for playback as well, it's more important during the recording phase. I'm going to set my counter to zero. And what I am going to do is I'm going to set it so that when I go to rewind, it's going to stop at the counter. So we're going to go ahead and start recording. Let's figure out what our source looks like. I'm going to turn the sound up a little bit. pretty high, so let me bring that down a little bit. Okay, I want to try to get somewhere around the middle. And even though this looks a little off, let's, we can, my source might be higher on the left than the right. 
you might want to just adjust that with headphones. Just make sure it's recording as you want it. That's about right. Now we're going to start recording. And now what we're going to do, I'm going to turn this up. We're going to listen to it as it's recording. Source. Now what you just heard was recorded on the tape. So you're hearing what's being recorded on the tape and it's playing, being played back uh, immediately after. Source. Tape. Dolby is not on. Now I'm going to turn Dolby on. Notice you'll hear it come on because we're on tape monitor. All right. Now, when you're on monitor or you're playing back a tape, the output control works. And I'm going to even this up a little bit. I'm going to put some other source material on. It's best to do your balancing with headphones on just so that it, it you hear it sounding the way you want it to. I'm just using a visual right now, which is not always the best way to do it. What you want to do with a visual is make sure that you're not going too high all the time. You can determine that with your peak. And on a standard tape, it's probably a little high, so you might want to back it down a little bit. It might be getting distorted at that point. Now let's play it back. Let's see how this actually sounds. Now notice, notice it rewound to zero, and what I have is I have this set under repeat to repeat at counter, which means it'll repeat at zero, and that's why it started playing. Now take a listen to this. I'm going to turn this, I'm going to leave Dolby on, and then I'm going to turn it off. This is where we change source. You can take Toby off. Now remember, Dolby is used to encode and then to decode. Basically, it boosts highs in certain ranges at certain dB levels. So you can play it. You can play it without Dolby. But if you record it with Dolby, then playing it back with Dolby will, for the quiet passages, remove the tape hiss or reduce the tape hiss. That sounds pretty good for a standard tape. Now we're going to go ahead and put a, a chrome tape in and do the same thing. This is a high bias chromium dioxide, it's actually a cobalt ferric tape, but I'm going to go ahead and start recording the same music that we were recording before.
and uh, let's see how it sounds. Now, before I do, I've got to set that to CRO2, and I'm going to leave the level as it is. I might change that as we play. Now the bias fine adjustment, that works with any tapes. I didn't do it on the standard, but I'll do it here. Now listen very carefully. Listen for the highs. Just a minor change to the music as you're recording it. Now let's listen to that. Now when you're playing back, you can affect the equalization by taking it off of CRO2. Notice. And you can further boost the highs by basically taking Dolby out. But this is the way it's meant to sound. So that's your chrome tape. Works really nicely. Now I'm going to do a metal tape. So we'll take this one out. I'm going to put a metal tape in. I'm going to re queue up the same. Uh, but what I'm going to do is set this to metal. Okay. Everything else is the same. Haven't changed anything. I'm going to put the source back on and uh, we'll get this recording. So let me queue that up. Now with a metal tape, you can record a little higher if you want to. The metal tapes, chrome tapes do a little bit over standard as well, but specifically metal tapes have a higher uh, uh, output level that they can take from a saturation standpoint. So I put this up just a bit. Bias. acts a little differently with a metal tape than it does a standard or a chrome tape. But it does allow you to alter a little bit. Now notice, this is a metal tape. If I put it on standard, it's not erasing the tape. The back, whatever was recorded before is still sort of there. Um, the reason is, is that with metal, you have to use a much higher current on the erase head as you're erasing prior material. So notice it's not doing anything on standard. It sort of would work on Chrome, but not really well. And 
anything that works on Chrome sometimes will, maybe won't on FECR. The old ferrochrome tapes don't exist anymore. They're not made. Um, they, they weren't made for a very long period of time. So if you buy some metal tapes, you can use them with this. Now remember, all that metal matters is in recording. You can play back a metal tape on any deck you want to. It's just the recording on a metal tape which requires a deck like the 950 or the 1250 that can accommodate that higher record head, actually erase head, uh, current and bias. Now, this particular unit, I'm going to talk about the things, as I said, I'm going to kind of review what was done to it. I put a sticker on the back that uh, details not only the QA steps that I go through, but also what was changed on this particular unit. This unit had a new belt kit idler tire, uh, left and right pinch rollers, left pinch roller height adjustment, the rewind motor was rebuilt, um, the display was replaced, uh, sorry, I replaced a display button uh, on the mechanism because that had broken, this, this one down here had broken. Um, I deoxid cleaned up the controls. I did an azimuth adjustment, so it's now perfectly on azimuth with an oscilloscope, so I've got that correct. I did have to adjust the speed, it was a little fast. Um, I do that with an oscilloscope and with a calibration tape. Um, I evened up the playback, record EQ, all that stuff. Um, and I've done several tests on all tape types. And one thing that I also do is I let this play. You can put this in a certain mode where you can say, um, just keep repeating whenever you, you go to the end of the tape so when you hit the end of the tape it will rewind and it will keep playing uh, keep playing that tape over and over again even though it's not an auto reverse deck it'll keep playing the the one side over and over again and I'll, I'll actually demonstrate that so let me let me get a tape to the end and show you this is a tape that's coming to the end and I will play it and you'll see gets to the end and then it will start rewinding and what it will do is it will rewind all the way to the to the um, to the end and start playing again and I'll show you that so there it starts to rewind and just to illustrate um, and then it starts to play again Okay. And that's, that's what some of these um, controls uh, do for you. I include a user uh, manual with the unit so that you can familiarize yourself with what it uh, does. Now, this particular unit will come with uh, a very, uh, very good condition wooden top uh, case top. So when I finish this video, the next segment on this video will include this with the top on it. Uh, and it is, it's an exceptionally looking um, unit. I will point out a few minor, minor flaws. There is a very small, very small nick right here on the front faceplate. There's a very small nick right here on the faceplate. I don't think I have any recorded any scratches anywhere else on this. The the whole thing looks almost like you took it out of the out of the box. Um, it's in really really great condition. So I'm going to put the top on it and then show you what that looks like as well. And here is the cassette deck with the uh, wooden case top. Now the wooden case top is simulated wood grain. It's not real wood grain. It's not laminated, just vinyl over 
plywood. Um, but what we have been doing on eBay, the, the sellers who are, who are selling these, um, I'm one of them, after we refurbish them, what we're doing is we're doing uh, special documentation and marking of these units so that um, we keep everybody honest. Just um, letting folks know, um, we have one of the things that we've run into is people buying the refurbished units and then uh, issuing a, um, uh, a return request, returning it with a broken or an old case top, which was not the case top that came with it when we sold it. So what we are doing is we are doing special documentation, and this is part of it, to ensure that the, the case is very well documented, um, that it is in pristine condition, very, I can't say pristine condition, but I can say it's a very good condition. There are some scratches. See, there's a scratch. Um, there are some, for the most part, I mean, this looks pretty good. And remember, this is not wood. It's just simulated wood, but it sure looks good. Um, the, all of the um, metal looks good. And, and when, we, when we turn this around and we look at the um, serial number, just so that we can verify that uh, this is in fact the unit that we have sold. You can see that serial number there. And uh, I'm going to take you, continue taking you on a tour of, of what the case looks like. Uh, side looks, this side looks beautiful. And notice one of the things that we find on these decks all the time is the, you know, the face is some, is, you know, something's, you know, crunched in on, on one of the sides. And... Uh, this one in particular is not. This looks really, really good. Again, on the other side, just so you can see what it uh, what it looks like. Really nice looking. And there are going to be some very clear pictures in uh, in the listing. But again, here here are some scratches. Now again, I'm I'm not selling something brand new. I'm selling something that's refurbished. Uh, but boy, I got to tell you, this is one of the nicest cases I think I have seen. Um, on one of these. In fact, this is just one of the nicest units I've had. I would keep it for myself if I didn't have uh, my 1250. So there you go. I'm going to um, uh, list this and go ahead and put pictures of uh, all of the uh, the beauty shots up and and all of that. I want you to pay very close attention to the video. Um, remember, these are sold as is. Now, I sell them in a, when I sell them, I, I'm very clear, it will not be dead on arrival. It will work. I can't warrant it. I can't tell you it's going to work for 40 more years or for four more years or for four more months. Given it's, the 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 way these units were constructed, um, how this particular unit works and looks after the work that I've done on it, I I would be surprised if you had any trouble with it, but um, I I cannot warrant it, so it will be guaranteed not dead on arrival. If you have a problem, you know we plug it in and it doesn't work, uh, or it was damaged in shipping. If it was damaged in shipping, uh, I need you to let me know immediately. Um, but that's, those are the only exceptions. Um, again, as I said, this is, um, this is vintage audio. I can't guarantee it. I can at least say it's not going to be dead on arrival. Now, if you look at my history, if you look at, uh, my feedback, you'll, you'll see people have been buying these and been very happy with them. Okay. That's it for this video. Look for the beauty shots. Um, ask any questions, any questions you want to before you buy it, and I'll try my best to answer. Thanks. One last thing I completely forgot to show, and I'm going to show it now, is the uh, timer start. I've got this set to play. I'm going to turn the power on, 
and you'll notice that what it does is it starts playing. Works the same way for record. If I set it to record and then the unit is powered on, this would be using one of the um, old style power um, timers that uh, Pioneer said they used to sell, but you can do it with other timers. and it starts recording. Okay, that's what I forgot to show and now you've seen it.